everyone welcome in crochet life and stuff with Deborah presents something more from the life and stuff category a flip through of the latest all recipes magazine this one is oh goodness the December through January 2022 edition and the main focus appears to be holiday magic I mean you know cookies should be any time of the year quite honestly let's just get started not going to be a complete look through of every page but I do love the way they set up their table of contents always a nice picture or several pictures with a listing of what's in there and let's see if I can turn these pages because my hands are dry y'all they just stay dry oh multiple tables of content pages including telling you where to go to get the stuff from the cover right there a lot of yummy looking pictures there i always love yummy looking pictures a lot of adverts in here too and something else that this magazine does which i think is really cool uh this is the recipe index where you get a listing of all of the recipes what pages they can be on and their little uh guide down here some of them are marked that they have how-to videos that you can look on youtube and find and others tell you if they're gluten-free or vegetarian or, or what have you they're all marked in some way so yeah good stuff and just to remind you this is not sponsored by anybody I buy this subscription and I rather enjoy it which is why I like sharing it with y'all um, always a new section always a section here called what's new and trending and then you got a letter from the editor uh, oh wine and dye look at the picture on this one sometimes the photography is just so much fun look at all of those probably adult mixed drinks there but they look all sparkly and happy oh and also from the wine and dine section wow yeah the photography is lovely on this this gives you wine pairings um what you can reheat to make for your little party yeah I don't know people in person nobody comes to my house and most of the time I'm actually okay with that I'm like in my own little bubble little bowl well, it's a big bubble because I'm big but you know little bubble ooh 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 Oh, and they've also got a lot of uh, like like QR codes that you can scan to get more information on certain stuff. I mean, they've really kind of tried to integrate it. You know, some of us really do like the paper that comes in to be able to look through and flip through. But it is nice to be able to, you know, take it online if there's something you want to look at. Look at these, though. Sweet vegan butternut squash soup. I don't care if it's vegan or not. That looks amazing. Yeah, that's one that I might check into. There's also a page number to where that appears as far as a recipe. Oh, and then there's some biscotti. Chef John's almond biscotti. Now, I have mentioned Chef John before. Um, he's the one that always has, you know, interesting puns and things going on in his videos, but that biscotti looks awesome. I, I would never have think of making biscotti on my own, but I think I've seen that video and it didn't look that difficult. Um, if I remember, I will link Chef John up here because he is on YouTube and he is a blast. And some tips about, you know, adding sparkle to your party, again with the party. Gifts for a happy host. That's kind of neat things to bring to your host you know besides just a bottle of wine or something of course there's also down here a little wine sampler oh those are cute those would be perfect for me little bottles of wine I like wine but I'm the only person in the house that does and I don't like it enough to sit down and be like I'm going to have a bottle of wine no I like a glass of wine and that looks just perfect a little sampler a little something something oh Oh my, the trending, y'all. Chocolate. Chocolate is always the answer, isn't it? <laughs> There's never enough chocolate in one's life sometimes. Uh, in this one, it's in-season, cook to follow, smells like the holidays, and cookie connection. Oh, and there are pages of beautiful chocolate things. <gasps> Oh my goodness flourless triple chocolate cookies 
dark chocolate hot cocoa. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Chocolate ganache layer cake. And look at this. And there's pomegranate seeds on top. That is stunning. That's more work than I'm willing to go through for a piece of cake, quite honestly, because I shouldn't have it anyway. But boy, it's beautiful. And all the directions right there telling you how to do it. Yeah, yum, yum, yum. Oh, and here's something else with chocolate that a lot of people don't realize. In Mexican cuisine, they use chocolate in savory dishes. They're not like a chocolate bar. You don't stick a Hershey's bar in with your burger, okay? That's not how it works. Uh, but there's this thing called mole. And mole usually has a ton of ingredients. And look at that. This is a chicken mole. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. With all the different chilies. Mm, 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 mm. And yes, mole is often quite delicious. This is right here. It's a Mexican sauce made with dried chilies, nuts, seasonings, and often Mexican chocolate, which has a grainy texture from ground cocoa beans and an undercurrent of cinnamon. The rich, complex sauce isn't sweet per se, but the chocolate adds depth. Yeah, and it really does. A good mole is like nothing else you've ever seen. And there are as many different ways to make moles as there are families that make it because it is all pretty individualized. Oh. Oh my, this looks pretty good too. Interesting, something I probably wouldn't cook because I don't go out and buy, buy filet mignon. But look at that. Filet mignon with chocolate port sauce and it's pepper crusted. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Let's go past some of the adverts. They're introducing you to somebody named Chef Mo. To read about her a little bit later on. Hubby just dropped the mail off for me, so that was very sweet of him. And more adverts. Ah, smells like the holidays. And let's be real. You can almost smell that picture, right? The roast and the carrots and the potatoes and the onions. Ah, oh, yes. Beef Stefano. Never heard of it. But it's got beef chuck, some onions and garlic, a little dry red wine. Um, also some cinnamon and nutmeg little bit of orange zest. That sounds really good actually. It looks like a nice stew. Cinnamon, pork loin, and potatoes. Now I often add cinnamon to savory dishes. I think it's really nice. It's nice in a rub. So I'll bet that's delicious. Pulao, whole spice fragrant rice. That looks really cool. It's got cardamom in it and all kinds of spices. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Making myself hungry. But that's what this magazine does, is it makes you hungry. Oh, oh, I may have to make some of this. This is right up my alley. It's called Vanilla Golden Milk. There's milk, vanilla bean, turmeric, a little bit of sugar, which is also optional in this. That's kind of cool. Some cinnamon, black pepper, nutmeg, and uh, yeah. It's like not eggnog. Yeah, that's how I'd refer to that. Not eggnog, because it's just like a warm vanilla milk, not hot chocolate. Eggnog. Eggnot. Yes, the hubby just said eggnot. You know they could have they could have used that for the title. Eggnot. Love it. Here's something that looks pretty cool. Okay, first I'm going to show it to you because look at the design of that pastry. Isn't that awesome? It looks so fancy. Uh Lucicutter. And I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I will show you the word. And you look it up. Lusikater. Or Swedish saffron buns. Yes, please. And then we get into other cookies. Oh. Oh, I want a cookie. Or two. Or twelve. <laughs> uh, here's one called Ma'amul Lebanese Date Cookies. And not date like you go out on a date. No, date like the fruit, you know, hello. Um, an ingredient that I've never heard of is in here, which I'd have to look up. And that is malab, half a teaspoon of ground malab. You get, oh, and you can use figs instead of dates if you want. This is wonderful. And they look beautiful. Oh, and look at these. 
oh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, but it's a Sudanese cookie. And don't those look interesting? You see the almond in there. It is a seasonal Sudanese cookie, usually used for Ayad celebrations, but you are surely free to bake them at any time of the year. This recipe was handed down by my mother, says the person who submitted this. And there's ghee in it, there's flour, sugar, um, and cloves or blanched almonds, because you can top it with a clove instead of an almond if you like. Yum. Oh, we're, we're going all around the world with the cookies today. Again, I don't know how to say this either. Kreszczyki. It is a Polish bow tie cookie. Looks delicious to me as I cover up the picture, but yes. Gorgeous. And this one, well, the only um, extra ingredient that you may or may not have in your house is whiskey. A tablespoon of it, so not a terrible lot. There's probably workarounds for it in the recipe, but yeah. Anzac biscuits. These are Australian coconut oat cookies. I love going around the world for snacks. <clears throat> In case you didn't know, I do have a Snacks Around the World series that I will try to link the playlist of up there at some point during this video. And then we have some more adverts. <clears throat> DIY Dulce de Leche for your Alajores, Dulce de Leche sandwich cookies. Oh, I love Dulce de Leche. Those look neat. It looks like a lot of work to make Dulce de Leche yourself and then make the cookies. But yeah, that sounds really, really delicious. Okay, we're stepping away from the cookies for a hot minute for dinner fix. I haven't even looked to see what that is yet, but it looks good. Ah, meatless baked ziti. Okay, I'm on board with that. Weeknight winners for some quick sort of meals. Says you can have these dishes on your table in 35 minutes or less. Yep, you sure can. French onion beef meatball subs. Doesn't that sound delicious? Sometimes a sub or a sandwich dinner is just, you know, it's just what you need. It's not formal or fancy. And it's often like comfort food. Oh, there's even air fryer directions for this one for the meatballs. Um, stir fried shrimp with snow peas and ginger. Substitute that takeout, y'all. Yeah. Yes, yes, stir fried food is wonderful anyway. Oven fried pork chops. Pretty, pretty. Okay, a lot of recipes in here, a lot of them. <clears throat> oh, and this is interesting. This is called Meanwhile Meals. During a busy holiday season, downtime is a gift. Hence, our, pre our present to you, a collection of delicious recipes with built-in breaks. Dishes that simmer and soften, deepen in flavor, or roast up golden brown and delicious with minimal attention. So relax, catch your breath, or slay something else on your to-do list during your Meanwhile Time. Tonight, dinner is almost cooking itself. I like that. Um, these kind of meals, they give me time to crochet, quite honestly. You set something up, you put it in the oven, you make sure the timer's going. Yeah, you don't want to be share like Sharon with her blaming Marie calendars for everything. You set your timer, you make sure your oven's on the right temperature, and you just move along. Chicken and veggie sheet pan dinner with olives and feta. That looks amazing. Oh, yes. Very pretty, too. Beautiful and appetizing. And you let it roast for nearly an hour while you do other things, like ketchup on your crochet. Mm-hmm. Instant pot white bean soup, soup with prosciutto. That looks lovely. And the instant pot really does make some things very, very easy. Lamb braised in pomegranate. Oh, this is another Chef John recipe. That looks delicious. And this is one that you, you know, you put it in the oven for over two hours. You got plenty of time to do other stuff. Shrimp sausage and fish jambalaya. Anybody who's had any food from the New Orleans region of the U.S., y'all know what jambalaya tastes like. 
It's good. It's spicy, but it's good. Something a little less spicy, but no less delicious. Look at those fresh sage leaves on there. Look at that. Sweet potato bacon and veggie skillet. All right. Works for me. All of these work for me. Are you kidding? I'm a fat chick. I love food. Um, here's some simple sides they've got on here. Uh, spinach salad with warm bacon vinaigrette. Yes, please. I've got spinach in the fridge. I need to do something with that. Hmm. Uh, maple cider cabbage with air fryer apples and potatoes. Putting that air fryer to work again. Frisee with garlic butter and grapefruit. Can't have grapefruit due to some medication that I take, but that sure is a fancy looking side dish, isn't it? An advert for bacon right opposite a page that has a recipe that includes bacon. Hmm, somebody's planning some stuff here. Okay, now let's see. I'm missing a page or two because I can't get the pages to turn because my fingers are dry. Yes, I'm missing this. Veg up. Oh, look at this. Portobello mushroom bolognese sauce. So you've got a vegetable version of bolognese. Bolognese is, is a meat sauce, but you can do it without meat. Okay. Looks delicious, doesn't it? And here's some like little sort of meal plans. You put together different recipes for different meal options in case you are just lacking. You've worked too long. And your brain says, cannot function, go get takeout. No. Try something from here. They'll put it together. They practically cook it for you, only not quite. You just got to get somebody else to do the dishes. That's always a good partnership. Trust me on that. Uh, this one says, good for you. I don't know how waffles are good for you, but waffles. Yes, please. I'll take a waffle. Absolutely. Oh, better breakfast. For a hearty morning meal, preheat the waffle iron. This whole grain formula will satisfy a sweet tooth with minimal added sugars and saturated fat. That's why it's healthy, because it's a whole grain version. But don't they look delicious? And sometimes <clears throat> we like to do breakfast for dinner. Make bacon and eggs and sometimes biscuits and gravy and just make it, you know, make it a real big breakfast for dinner. Oh, this is one of the ones. Uh, strike it rich. You have indulge or healthy. There's the picture of one than the other. The indulge is New England clam chowder too. And the go healthy is cauliflower clam chowder. Huh. And turkey bacon. I don't trust turkey bacon. That's just a personal preference. <sighs> what are they making it out of? I know they're making it out of turkey, but turkey just lacks the right parts to make bacon bacon. But that's just me. Someone will have to convince me by making me try it at some point, I think. Here's another uh, Indulge or Go Healthy. Chocolate, the Indulge is chocolate croissant bread pudding. And the Go Healthy is Tres Leches bread pudding. I don't know how Tres Leches can be a Go Healthy. I guess it's a Go a little bit healthier. Um, yeah, because it uses fat-free milk and fat-free evaporated milk eh. eh as long as you're not eating the entire thing have a small portion which is tough when there's two people in a household because we are not small people and I do not understand how to cook for just two people even though I have never lived in a large household I cook like I'm cooking for an army so yeah Break the diet cycle, why diets don't work. This is going to be an interesting article to read, and it is an article. Um, it's about just, you know, taking steps to eat a little healthier and do some things, it looks like. I haven't read this yet. I did take it out of the package to start off the video, make it a little easier. But, um, yeah, haven't read it yet. I should, though. <clears throat> and in the family section, for kids, favorites, and all recipes... Spinach and ricotta puff pastry Christmas tree. That looks amazing and super cute. And as long as the puff pastry is cooperating, not terribly difficult. Oh, and it says make it kid friendly. Hold the spinach for a cheese only version of these pinwheels and serve them with marinara. 
Or how about don't tell them that it's spinach and just serve it to them anyway. I loved spinach as a child. Yeah. I, I, mm. Not a big fan of trying to hide vegetables from kids. I think that put them in there. Show them you're eating them. Show them that they're good. Look at these. Kid adaptable holiday meals. I think those meatballs look pretty good. And the only difference with this one is, is changing the dipping sauce. Okay, let him try the other one now. <clears throat> Pardon me. Make it kid friendly. Hold the dipping sauce or let the younger set dunk their meatballs in ketchup or barbecue sauce. But this dipping sauce is a sweet soy dipping sauce. Make it. Have some. Try it. Encourage them to try it. If they don't like it after they've taken a real good serious try, okay. They don't like it. They might like it later in life. Here's another one, jalapeno popper cups. Those look really cute. I wonder how they're kid friendly in that one up. Oh, okay. Before adding the jalapenos and hot sauce, set aside some of the cream cheese and cheddar filling. Use the unspiced portion to fill phyllo cups for the kids. Garnish the grown up poppers with some cilantro so you know the difference. Or if you have someone who cannot eat the spicy food, just make it that way. Or make it with a milder green chili, like, or just use green peppers. Chopped up really small so you have it for the color in there, a little flavor. There's always a way. Here's some honey glazed, orange glazed ham. Isn't that pretty? Uh, making ham sliders in there as well. Creamy Yukon mashed potatoes, and they've got goat cheese and dill and chives in them. Oh, indeed, yes. And it says to make it kid-friendly, hold back some of the things and don't put those things in there. I say, put it in there, tell them it's mashed potatoes, and give it to them. They'll either like it or they won't. I mean, am I wrong here? I mean, when we were kids, you were served food, and that was it. You either ate it or you went hungry. If there's something you really didn't like, you still had to try it every time it was put on the table. But you ate it. Has that changed? Actually, I think I know when it changed. I'm the eldest grandchild by like 13 years. At my grandparents' house, it was, you're going to eat what we fix. By the time the next generation came around of grandkids, oh, you don't like that? Let me fix you something different. What? What? I think that's what's done now. I, I just don't understand. Look at that. Cheesecake bites. Yes, please. And then there's some of the recipes for some of the things we looked at with the pictures. Favorites you love. Curried sweet potato latkes. Sweet potato pancakes instead of just regular shredded potato pancakes like or latkes. Never tried them with sweet potatoes before like that. I love me a good latka. Mm. Yes, please. Scrambled egg brunch bread. That looks delicious. I don't know if it would be a lot of work. It probably would if you're making the bread. Why does this flip out? Oh, there's another picture of it. And an advert for some eggs, of course. <laughs> they give you some five-star finds, some, some different magazines and different things to go look at. Um, a scones recipe, simple scones. Those look wonderful. But yeah, the photography in this magazine is lovely. And a little focus on, on someone in the magazine with their kitties. I will definitely have to go read that because, yes. And they tell you about things that your dogs can eat and cannot eat because that's something that really needs to be thought about. And I believe we may have come to the end. Oh, no, we have not. More recipes. Wow. Roasted winter root vegetables. I love roasted vegetables. 
if you're of my generation and you ever had vegetables that you really just didn't like because ew they were gross or whatever um try cooking them differently than you had them when you were a kid i hated brussels sprouts when i was a kid i tried them they were gross they were mushy they were stinky Ugh. now yes cut those little guys in half little olive oil a uh, little garlic powder a little salt stick them in the oven roast them let them get a little bit brown a little bit crunchy on the outside but don't overcook them they're brilliant absolutely brilliant and the last recipe they have in here drop it like it's hot it says it's for a warm white russian so they get you to eat all this food and they're gonna booze you up that sounds like a good idea doesn't it and of course an advert for wine on the back so what did you think about the all recipes this month or I guess two months it's gonna cover December and January I love looking through them I'm not a big recipe follower I'm more of a they give me an idea so that I can do it and uh, and just you know play in the kitchen I go into the kitchen I go into the pantry which is behind me and I spin around like a nut go back and forth a few dozen times and emerge with food um, because that's how I cook. I'm not a big measurer. I'm a, yeah, throw some of this in there, a few of those, some of that. Oh, get that thing out of the back of the fridge. That'll be great in here. That's how I cook. How do you cook? Are you a real recipe follower? Or do you like to just wing it in the kitchen? That's why I don't bake. If you bake, it's, it's very scientific. You have to do things a very specific way or things don't happen properly. Yeah, and I don't like following directions. Y'all have seen me crochet, right? Mm hmm it all ties together <laughs> thanks for coming by for this flip through of this nice thick all recipes magazine uh, there will be a playlist of my all recipes magazines down in the description down below and all of my magazines actually there's also a, a book look which is just crochet books and craft books and a lot of other playlists that you may have missed I'd love it if you hit the like button before you left today. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you very soon. Bye, y'all.